life is not just about making money. It's also making money with a good quality of life. Of course. So what's the automation secrets? Okay. So when you have one or two listings on Airbnb, it's, it's cute. It's fun. It's easy to manage. When you start getting five, six, 10, 15 listings, it gets to be a lot of work. And yes. essentially what you're doing is you're running a hotel, but it's a distributed hotel. So instead of rooms all in one place where it's easy to manage, you've got rooms all over the city or in multiple cities, multiple states, you're trying to manage all these things. And that tends to be a job. So you have people that are messaging you. They're, they're, the first of all, they're reaching out to you to say, hey, will you take a discount on these days? Or will you allow me to book? Or can I bring my, my shih tzu with me? Or you know, all kinds of random stuff they'll reach out to you about. And so you got to accept or deny their bookings and their requests. Then when they come stay in the place, they're going to have questions, you know, like where do I go to cool, find a cool restaurant? Or, or you know, what's the address again? How do I get in? Where's the key? All that kind of stuff. So when you do that multiplied by let's say eight guests checking in out of eight properties every single day ends up yeah. being a lot of work, just the messaging yeah, yeah. itself. Now you have to coordinate the cleaners. So yep. the cleaning crew has to come in and they gotta be coordinated. And if, what if something breaks? Who's gonna take care of that? Who's gonna fix something if it breaks? So all these things have to be managed. Or if they trash it, or they... Or if they trash it, well it hasn't happened. Knock on, knock on uh, fabric, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but That's so, good, so nobody's, a, nobody's trashing No, I've, I've had messy guests, in fact, I've almost, I don't think I've ever heard of a student that said, look, somebody destroyed my Does property. Does Airbnb have an insurance policy they helping do. you? So that's nice. They have like, a $1 million host protection insurance where they'll pay out. But I recommend going a step beyond that and getting actual insurance. It's very inexpensive. Privately? Yeah. You get uh, short-term rental insurance. On each property that you're controlling. On each property controlling. And, you, and you make the owner the beneficiary, so they're protected. Right. So if somebody accidentally... Destroyed, the whole place burns down. Place but, yeah, it's paid for. Yeah. I have a property that I had um, in La Jolla, California. This was an Airbnb. Yeah. And um, my property manager, who's a friend of mine, Joey, he came and he said, listen, Ty, they were just diagnosed with cancer, the husband. They can't pay the rent. So I said, he said, we're going to have to evict them. They haven't paid the rent. And I said, you know what? Let's be nice. They asked for a little more time. I gave them a little time. I gave them time. Gave them time. I ended up giving them the whole summer. I could have rented it yeah. out. And finally, we're like, listen, it's been three months, August, you, you're going to have to get out. They trashed the whole place, oh. spray painted. What's the saying? No good deed goes unpunished. I was yeah. going, no one else in America will just give you three months summer in La Jolla. It's a nice area. Yeah. So I'm glad that with Airbnb, I wonder if people feel more accountable. It's a mentality. Yeah. It's a mentality of ownership versus non-ownership because a tenant feels like they own the property, yes. even though they don't. They're like, this yes. is my space. Yep. It's my, I got a year here. I got forever here. That's, and, a, and a guest doesn't feel that way when they're staying for two days. They're Plus, just like, Airbnb I be probably has their credit card. Airbnb has their credit I card. I could see Airbnb going after people if they smash Well, they it. will because you can charge a deposit. So I can request a $500 hold on a credit card. Okay. And that hold's not released until two days later or three days later. Do you when, do that? Oh, I do. Yeah. So, yeah. Occasionally. I do it um, if I'm going to allow pets. I'll do a pet hold yes. or a deposit on that if there's any damages. Somebody's like, can I bring so, my grizzly bear? You're like, <laughs> like uh, yeah. yeah. So there, you can you can do $5, a deposit. $5,000. Yep. Okay. So that's a good little, good little side tip. So what else? Allow okay. So how do you automate all the okay. phone calls, all the maid services, all this stuff? Because people listening, I know my followers and listeners they want to scale this thing up and at least make 10 grand a month, yeah, right? Of course. And that way they can quit their nine to five job. So that was my goal. That was your goal. That was my goal when I started out. That's yeah. a good goal. I mean, $10,000 a month, put it this way. The average doctor in America, believe it or not, makes $120,000 a year. Yep. So if you can, and that's somebody who went to 10, 15 years of medical school and college. Has a lot of debt. Yeah. And, and look, I'm not saying you shouldn't, we need more doctors in the world. I'm happy for everybody who does that. I'm just giving you a comparison that. Yep. We're laying out here for free on this po this episode, like how you can make a doctor's income realistically. Yeah. Um, and you've had people build this in less than a year, right? Less than a year. Actually, let's break it down. $100,000 divided by 12 is roughly $8,333. Yes. You could do that with four properties. Yep. A little over two. So you only need four properties. You could do it. Well, you, let's say you made less than $2,000 a property. You could do yep. that with six properties. I've had students that have done it with two where they're making four grand and four grand per yep. month net. So we're not talking a lot of properties to do this, yeah. to get to six figures if that's your goal. So, so but you, you want to scale it even more than that, I would hope, if you, once you start doing this. But what happens is you have all this management, essentially. And mm -hmm. I was so excited to quit my job. I quit after about the fifth listing. I quit my job. And I thought, okay, I got all the time in the world now. But then it started 
creeping back, this business started taking more and my, more of my time. So I started thinking, okay, how can I emulate the hotel industry? Everything I did was based on the hotel industry. I'd look at what they're doing and try to do the same thing. And I said, well, you know, hotels have a front desk. I don't have mm. a front desk. And I need a front desk manager. Mm -hmm. I need somebody. So what can I do? Well, I could create a virtual front desk. How would I do that? Well, I need somebody that can message these guests back, coordinate with the cleaners, do all these different things. And I started looking around. And I found out there were actually services that do this. Hmm. They'll take like 5% of your, your income on Airbnb and then they'll manage it all. So okay. there's services that do this. There are also VAs. There's a yep. lot of VAs now that specialize in doing nothing but managing Airbnbs. So you can go on to Upwork. Yeah, and find a VA. So you go to Upwork and you search Airbnb management. Yeah, and you'll find people pop VAs, up. VAs, by the way, stands for virtual assistant. Yeah, virtual you know, assistant. Yeah. yeah, so virtual assistant. So this is the way everything's going nowadays. You could, you don't have to get a VA in the States. You can get somebody in the Philippines, Philippines yeah. or whatever. As long as they so, speak English. Yeah, yeah, they need to speak English and they probably need to be able to get on the phone once in a while. And so you, you essentially, you teach them how to do the management that you do. Now, do you put a phone number that everybody gets in an email that says, if you have questions, call or email this number? Do you I'm do a little live chat. Well, Airbnb requires that people be able to text you and call you. So you yes. have to have a phone number in there, but that doesn't have to go to you necessarily. So you don't put your phone number. What I do is I tell people, please don't call me or text me, message me through the app. That's the best way yes. to reach me because I want to teach them to go through the app, which is going to be watched by my VA, for example. So Airbnb app they allows message you direct, people. Yep, direct and it messaging. It has a whole internal system, and you can give virtual assistants access to that. You give them access. And how now, many does it? How many VAs does it take for? Let's say you've got twelve properties. Do you need one full time that you're paying five grand a month, two grand a month, three grand? One, and it's yeah. you know twenty, thirty hours a week. Yeah. Times whatever you're paying them, five dollars an hour, ten dollars an hour, fifteen, yeah. depending on what you're paying. So it's costing you a thousand bucks or it's, something a month. It's not much at all. I, yeah. I, what I found is across my business, it takes about five percent. So ninety-five cents of every dollar I get to keep if I outsource. I'd rather uh, pay five cents and do nothing than make a hundred cents on every dollar and do it all myself. Yeah. So so I'm always looking to outsource and automate everything.